Hey, Joe Casaboni here, and I'm just letting you know that How I Built It is now Streamlined Solopreneur. So if you're seeing new artwork and a new name in your podcast player, that is expected and by design. The new name better reflects the mission and really what has been the mission of this show for the last few years, and I'm really excited about it. All the links in the show notes and howibuilt.it will still work, but the show also has a new home over at streamlined.fm if you want to check it out. Thanks so much for listening. I think someone the other day was working on a book. They spent 12 days and wrote a 22,000 word book using cast magic, literally all through just their thoughts and coming up with prompts to make it sound like themselves, but extract it so that it would be written into a book format. I have strong opinions about that. I don't want to derail this conversation, but I do want to ask about the, first of all, I love the prompts idea. I think that's really interesting. I have said that using AI to write your book is is kind of like saying I used a car to run a marathon. But that's a conversation for a different day because I do want to get... Oh, but remember, it's their words. So she's literally speaking into her mic going like, I'm rambling, rambling, rambling. I organize that into a chapter for me. No different than you taking these podcasts and going like, how do I write a book about podcasting based on the 500 episodes that you've done, right? So it's just organizing what you've already said your thoughts into something cohesive. I want to remain consistent in my view. So I don't want to like blindly, I don't want to agree straight out with this, but I, I think there is a, uh, there's more to writing a book than just organizing thoughts. I'm currently reading the book stories that stick by Kendra Hall. In it, she mentions that the word story has become such a common term that people use it for everything. Even if it's not a story, I feel the same way about the term repurposing. See, when you repurpose something in the real world, you take it, you make some changes to it, and you give it new life. You don't just lop a piece of it off and say you've repurposed it. But that's what many people consider repurposing in content creation. I'm going to clip one minute of this 60-minute conversation, and I'm going to call it repurposed. That's why I'm excited to have Greg Wasserman on the show today. He is the head of relations at Cast Magic, which is an AI repurposing tool, and he helps us reframe the term repurposing and talks about how AI can help us repurpose properly. And while I don't agree with everything he says, I'm very AI hesitant. I do like to explore different ideas on this show. So look for these top takeaways. Repurposing content isn't just turning current content into other content. It's doing things like taking conversations and turning them into content products and more. Get creative. Greg uses his coaching calls and repurposes them into courses. How can you take conversations you're having and leverage them to get something tangible for your business? Tangible and valuable. When it comes to leveraging AI, consider your creative comfort. Some people are more comfortable writing. Some people feel better talking it out. Integrate AI into your current and best process. And I should say here at the top of the show that AI is not a replacement for the human being. You can't just say, summarize this call and turn it into a course or a book or a blog post. You need to put effort into it. You need to make something worth consuming. And I hope that comes through from both Greg and me in this conversation. I'm really bullish about that. And I think that's going to be the thing that differentiates the true creators who use AI as a tool versus the people who are using AI to try to lazily get their work done. I hope you enjoy this conversation. I'll also say that this is the first official episode where How I Built It is now the streamlined solopreneur. So all of the old links will work, but the website is now streamlined.fm. If you are seeing new artwork and a new name, don't fret. These things are just better aligned with the new mission for the show. The one that's really been the mission of the show for the last four years. Thanks so much for sticking with me all this time. But for now, let's get into the intro and then the interview. Welcome to the Streamlined Solopreneur. 
a show for busy solopreneurs to help you improve your systems and processes so you can build a business while spending your time the way you want. I know you're busy, so let's get started. All right, I am here with Greg Wasserman, the head of relationships at Cast Magic. Greg, how are you today? I'm amazing. I get to speak to you, get to talk to a great audience of uh, solopreneurs, and I'm just happy to be here. Yeah, I am psyched too. So the listeners will have already heard this over the past couple of weeks and in the intro, but we're officially, we, the show is officially Streamlined Solopreneur now, which is very exciting. I'm I'm excited to kind of kick that off with you. I think that what we're about to talk about is in line with the show and the show's very stated mission at this point. So for anybody listening, you can head over to streamlined.fm to see the new website and branding. You'll see everything from how, like I didn't rebrand how I built it, but like the older episodes, but the new episodes starting today will be over at streamlined.fm. So Greg, thanks for being the inaugural guest for Streamlined Solopreneur. I'm honored. And as you said, I think today's topic is a perfect one. Yes. Awesome. So let's dive right into it. I have as as the heading in our document here, what is content repurposing? I think people listening probably know on some level what that is. So I'd like to get like, how do you view content repurposing? Let's start there. Yeah, I like to think of it as two different ways because it isn't just like, as you said, like people know, but like most people think of content repurposing is like, how do I take something and build it into a blog, a newsletter, a LinkedIn post? The way I always tell everyone here is content repurposing is how do I take a conversation, how do I take a piece of content and turn that into not only just a blog and newsletter, but something else. Like good example is I take my coaching calls and I turn that into a course. And I'm like, hold on, I'm now leveraging conversations I'm having with a client. And how do I now take that consistent conversation we're having week on week out and go, hold on, how do I just build a course out of this, help my business, how do I monetize more? And so it's thinking about all those different avenues besides just a title, show notes from a podcast standpoint, like how do you leverage whatever you've got from a conversation, audio, video, and turn that into, in a sense, gold, right? Magic. Yeah, I love that, right? Because we've we've talked about a couple of things that you've mentioned on the show before, right? Most recently, I talked to Georgiana Lodi about kind of having good conversations and doing customer research. Uh, That's over at uh, streamline.fm slash 412. But the fact that you're doing this thing where you're taking your coaching calls and repurposing them into a course, you're killing multiple birds with one stone, right? You're like doing the research to understand what people are asking you. And then you're taking those things and you're turning them into content and products and things like that, which is really a really smart approach especially for solopreneurs who are trying to properly leverage their time. Uh, I mean, 100% agree. As a solopreneur, you're like, even if your business is not a course creation, your business is ultimately, how do I think about other ways I can make money? How could I, how could I be using my time better? Well, I'm now literally having these conversations and I'm able to use technology to help me turn those conversations into a course that I can go monetize, which probably is in line with my overall business. And you're working smarter instead of harder. And that's what we all want to do, right? Yeah, for sure. And I think that if if people are hearing this and they're like, how can I possibly do that? I give a discount on certain coaching calls if they will let me live stream it on YouTube. That live stream turns into a podcast episode. And then I take the questions that they ask and I can turn them into a blog post as well. So, you know, similar to what you're doing, I'm testing this thing where I see if more people bite on the coaching call to it, if it's like a little, if there's a slight discount to it, it's a little little experiment I'm running right now. It's interesting. So like the way I've been looking at it is like record the call. And so like I use our platform cast magic to share the content that I would want with them. So I'm like, great. You hired me for whatever reason you thought I would be a good coach, right? And part of that is I give you now the recording. I'm like, look, you want to go back and listen to what you said, what we talked about. Here you go. Here's the recording. But also, here is all this content that I've extracted for you, whether it's a worksheet, a blog post, a journal entry, a quiz, like anything that we'd want to go ahead and 
automate, I'm able to do that using the technology of like cast magic. And now I can give it to them. So it's like there's valuable for them. And then the value for me is then, all right, how do I take all that conversations and turn it into gold and leave out who that person is that I'm coaching, but ultimately take the content they've got. You can do that with meetings. You can do that with so many other facets. Yeah, and we'll talk about this later too, but one of the things that drew me to Cast Magic above some other similar tools, it's versatility, especially the coaching prompts, I guess. Like there's like different types of content and the coaching one is really like, wow, that's that's impressive. So we'll talk about that more later, but I like this view of content repurposing because I think it's, you're not just like, I, re- I recorded this video, now I'm going to chop it up and turn it into clips. You're taking the conversations, like you said. So I think we've kind of touched on your approach a little bit here, but I'm curious, when you go into one of these calls, are you thinking ahead of time, how can I repurpose this? Like, are you like leading the conversation in such a way or is it just like real or do the ideas kind of come up as you're having the call? I guess we don't know each other well enough to go like, that is too much planning. I'm a planner, but like to think about that, I'm like, no. I mean, I guess the only way you could think about the planning quote unquote section would be is if like, yeah, you're doing like a meeting and you're just like, you have an agenda, right? You go into a podcast, you have questions, there's an agenda to it. Like that would be the piece. But am I going into this thinking about like, ooh, what are the quotable pieces I want to make sure I extract from this? I'm like, no, that is just too much of a control of a conversation. You really want to just have like that free flowing, like whatever, it's a coaching, a meeting, a podcast or or a sales call, and it's like, oh, what could I do with it thereafter? I don't even want to think about what could I do with it thereafter. I'm letting the software kind of guide me on that and pull it out. I'm like, oh, I didn't even know those were things that we could work through. So we have our own form of thinking of strategy, but I just also rely on the AI to help me with it because I want to work smarter and I want to be working harder and and spending too much time on overanalyzing and planning and everything else. Yeah, and that's a really good point, right? Because like you don't you you want it to be good and helpful, and if you're trying to kind of steer it in one way or another, then it could be more helpful to you than than to the person you're talking to, right? And that's right. So that'll negatively impact that. I mean, look, when you're doing a podcast right now, you're going to ask a question. Maybe you you have a series of questions like, "Ooh, how do I stumble my guest, or how do I get a controversial comment, or how do I do that?" Like. Yeah, you're doing the planning there. So like, great, I got my snippet there. But that's probably also your style in the first place. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. It, and it depends on your style. I'm not like a nail them to the wall kind of guy. I always, long time listeners will know that like I break these up into a, like a three act story and act two has to be the conflict. And so I always ask like, a, like the interviewee, right? The guest knows the conflict ahead of time because I share the document and we talk through it. And that's pretty obvious, right? When we get to act two, because it's also right after the sponsor break. So people usually know we're about to get to the conflict, but yeah, I'm not not like looking to nail people to the wall. I want this to be organic with a little bit of, of preparation. So I like that a lot. Something else that's worked for me that I really need to leverage more is I will, when I do a webinar, first of all, webinars are a good place to, have content that you can plan out a little bit more if you want to repurpose that. But I always ask, like, what what question do you have? It's just super open-ended because those questions become like live stream or podcast episodes or blog posts. And I feel like that's like kind of based on how you frame repurposing here, that's repurposing, right? Like my attendees are asking me questions and I'm getting ideas on how to answer those questions. I usually answer them at the end of the live stream. So I get my kind of gut reaction to the question and then I can finesse it a little later with the help of AI tools. It's funny you bring that up. So thinking about like who's listening right now, the all of you are solopreneurs, right? Maybe you're not a podcaster. Maybe you're one who's like, I have a voice for radio. I don't want to be on video and I'm not the kind of person. But at the end of the day, whatever your business is, right? Like go ahead and do a Google search and go figure out what are the questions that people are asking that you as an expert, whatever your business and your field is, would want to answer to help you from an SEO standpoint, you can go ahead and then actually 
answer those questions, like record yourself answering those questions. And that's going to give you all this content that you're able to repurpose. Don't even think about the audio. Don't even have to think about the video component, but you can just go like, great. This gave me all the blog posts that I would need. This would give me all the article content I would need. And you're just building it out that way. So once again, how do I repurpose content? Great. I just figure out what the SEO questions are that I need to answer to get more business, to sell my business, record that. Once again, using AI tools to help you then extract it. And you've got all this content that you can always repurpose. Yeah, I I like that a lot. And uh, again, like listeners know kind of how I feel about AI doing all of the work for you writ large. We'll talk about that later. But I do want to get into, I think, a big question that people have around repurposing content. But first, we do need to take a quick break for our sponsors. Look, when you have an online-based business, speed and reliability are the most important aspects of a service. Not far behind that is actually owning the website that your business relies on. When you own your website, you're not subject to an algorithm, changing terms, or accidental shutdowns. That's why I'm so excited that Liquid Web is back as a sponsor of How I Built It this year. Their cloud VPS is some of the best in-class hosting you can get when your business relies on your website. From speed to security and protection to regular backups, with Liquid Web, you can trust your website will remain in tip-top shape. Not technically savvy? Don't worry. Liquid Web offers fully managed hosting, which means they have a team of knowledgeable experts looking after your website for you so you can focus on running your business. If you need fast, reliable, and secure hosting for your business, check out Liquid Web. Head over to howibuilt.it slash liquidweb today. I've had a sordid past with membership platforms. I've never really been happy with one because I've always had to jump through hoops to get things working. Then I found Memberful. Memberful has everything you need to get your membership program up and running quickly. Content gating, newsletters, community spaces, private podcasts, and more. I love the private podcast feature. Since my host doesn't have a payment gateway, I need to figure out a different way to sell it. Memberful can handle sales and management for me. Plus, you know I love automations, and Memberful integrates with a ton of services. They even have webhooks and support custom apps. It's the central place for every aspect of your membership. My membership is on pause, but you can bet that when I launch it again, it will be on Memberful. You can get started today for free at memberful.com slash how I built it. You don't pay until you start collecting payments. That's memberful.com slash how I built it. M-E-M-B-E-R. F-U-L dot com slash how I built it. Hey, real quick, before we get back into the episode, I want to tell you about my free newsletter, Podcast Workflows. If you are wondering how I can successfully run this show, plus two other shows, plus run a business, plus run three children, Podcast Workflows is for you. You will get weekly emails with behind the scenes look on how I produce this show experiments I am trying with other podcasts, and general advice to start, grow, and monetize your podcast. You'll also have the opportunity to become a member and get ad-free extended episodes of this show as well as bonus content. You can do all of that over at podcastworkflows.com slash join. That's podcastworkflows.com slash join. Sign up for free today. And we're back. So, Greg, there are people on the internet who will tell you, yeah, record your podcast, make clips, post them on social, grow your podcast. Will repurposing content get us more downloads, views, customers in the traditional way, if we haven't defined it, right? Again, most people view content repurposing as I have a video or I have a podcast. I'm going to chop it up into 60 second things and post them on the internet. Is that how we get more downloads? I mean, I guess this is the controversial piece. So the answer is, I hate that question. I disagree with everything in that question. 
So I used to run, to give you context, my background is I used to run three podcast listening platforms. And the three questions that usually all came up from podcasters is, how do I get more distribution? How do I grow my audience? And how do I get more downloads? Or I shouldn't say, how do I monetize? And the problem with those three questions is they all think about podcasting as just a one trick pony. I can only get downloads. And it's just all or nothing. You're like, hold on. I will never, I will never listen to all 400 episodes of yours, Joe's, but I could get your blog. I can get your website and read content there. I can see you on LinkedIn and get your 30 second spiel on there. I can consume a newsletter. There's so many ways I can engage with you as a brand to force me to spend 40 minutes, half hour, whatever your podcast is, and go, my downloads aren't growing, therefore I am not growing as a business, is the wrong way to think about it. So cutting it up is great, but you should be looking at just those cut-ups, not as the download factor, going like, did those cut-ups drive more downloads of my show? No. Did those just cut-ups get me more views? Did I get more engagement? Meaning I got people looking. You can take a sum of all that now and go, great, I have built a community. My community either is watching my shorts, they're listening to my show, they're reading my newsletter, all those little touch points. As I say, all the little tentacles from your, your, your octopus, right? Like all those components help you then build your brand. And so when you start thinking of yourself as a brand and not thinking about, I want downloads from my podcast, you'll actually start making more money and you'll actually find more success. So I would say from your answer to your question, hate the question. I disagree everything with it. Love it. That's usually the answer I get. Or, I mean, I'm saying the quiet part out loud, right? But like, I assume the answer to this question is like, absolutely not, right? Like, and I love what you said about, you know, people thinking that podcasting's a one trick pony, right? You have audiences in a bunch of places. We do cover this in episode 335 with Tom Schwab, where he says like a 40 minute interview can get you like, 20 or so pieces of content. I forget the exact numbers as I'm saying it now, but a bunch of content, right? Video, audio, written stuff. It's, it is a gold mine. And this was something I was just saying to one of my coaching clients, actually, when, I, when uh, you know, she was like, well, you know, how do I record so I can repurpose? And I'm like, well, let's stop right there, right? If you are repurposing to grow your podcast, that's Probably not going to work, right? Every social network wants you to stay on the the platform. But if you are using your podcast to grow your authority, the number one reason I think people in my audience at least should have a podcast, then definitely repurpose, right? Use that content, like you said, to build a community around the things that you're saying. I don't expect, and I, know, I mean, I have the data. People are not going to listen to every episode. They're going to listen to the ones that, probably help them solve a problem they have right now, right? And they're like, oh man, I just heard about jobs to be done. Or, oh man, how do I use AI, right? How, whatever I'm going to title this episode, everybody knows better than me at this point. So I really like your approach. Uh, And you did answer this a little bit, right? But let's kind of get into the spoiler alert for those listening. We'll talk about Cast Magic a lot in a little bit because I am am a user. I've had other people on the show, uh, Deidre Shen, from Cap Show, where we touch on this a bit, but you know, I I've used Cast Magic at this point the most. But how how can we leverage repurposing to grow our business? Is the question. I think you answered it a little bit, but let's get into some practical advice, right? Are you going to ask me for this interview, right, for this video when we're done, or is that something that you generally don't do? For example, as a guest, of course I am. Right. Yeah, exactly. Right. That was my expected, that was the expected response. Right. So how are you going to use this, for example, to help grow your business or at least grow your audience, let's say? Oh, I mean, I'm going to turn this into a LinkedIn post. So being a guest of a podcast who also works in podcasting, like I know the value of like, hold on, host wants your guests to go ahead and and share because that is part of the, the authority that they're, they're building on. What I love is most hosts that I go on their show, they never give me the content. And they're like yourself. They use my product. And I tell everyone, you can automate the content for your guest using cast magic. No one's doing it. And I'm like, you guys literally just give me a still image if I'm lucky. And here's the link. And I'm like, all right, I got to go run that in there. But to answer your question, for me, yeah, I'll turn this into multiple pieces of LinkedIn posts. So literally thinking about that this morning, I'm like, you know what? I've been on all these shows and I always just do one post. But if I want it, I can go back. Like, as we all know, 
people don't remember what I posted four months ago, maybe probably three weeks ago. So this is all evergreen content. I just have to change the format. Wait, I've got a tool that literally will create multiple pieces of content for me. So I don't even have to go and say like, what work do I have to come up with to create a new LinkedIn post? So I can do that. Part of what I'm doing from an authority standpoint is starting to build out my brand. So I'll build in blogs and so forth. But I'll take these and build out a course going like, great, what did Greg say on five podcasts that I was on? And there's my course. Or how do I extract it and go like, what could I give better value to my coaching clients? Because Joe's giving me his views and his knowledge. So I'm like, let me strip down what Joe said. I'm like, oh, I like that. I agree with that, but he worded it well. So how do I use that in my incorporating, incorporated in my own vernacular speech? So like, there's so many ways that I'm using this beyond just the, the goal that a host has from having a guest going like, Hey, how do I grow? How do I get Greg's audience to pay attention? It's like, you may or may not find that valuable, but yeah, so many different ways. This is brilliant. And got me thinking, right? Because when I go on a podcast, I do exactly what you've done. I have a branded website for my podcast content called podcastworkflows.com. And when I go on someone else's podcast, I usually just link to the podcast and say like what we talked about. But people are having me on the podcast to talk about the things I want to get more coaching clients or customers or whatever in. And I could definitely turn what we talked about into a blog post, which I haven't, I know, I guess I've always viewed it as, well, it's their content. And so I don't want to like step on their content. (laughs) Your reaction was excellent there. Uh, (laughs) But I guess if I'm, I guess as long as I'm not just like wholesale, like copying it and publishing it under my channel, right? No, no harm, no foul. I mean, at the end of the day, you're both doing your own blog post. So what I wrote as my blog post and what you wrote as your blog post, even if there's similarity into it, we both had the same conversation. Like this is, we're not stealing each other. We're, we're having a conversation. It's not like, it's not like a comedian who uh, is taking someone else's joke and going on stage and sharing that joke. It's like, no, we're, we're having a conversation. We, we are aligned on what the conversation is. Like why wouldn't I, both of us be able to put a blog post and, and use that? That's what I would plan on doing. Yeah, right. I'm giving you my thoughts, right? Yeah. Love that. Okay, so let's get into like the big, I said act two is usually the conflict, but I I suspect that as we get into the actionable advice, maybe we'll have some, some differing opinions here. I'm very bullish on using AI, right? I'm like AI hesitant. I don't think using it to wholesale repurpose content yields good results, right? I've used, you know, oh, here are clips, the clips are usually just kind of like random timestamps. It, it feels like I'm very particular about the way I word and, and write things. And so I don't think I've ever gotten something from AI that written that I feel like, oh, this is, yeah, this is ready to go. So I guess, first of all, do you agree slash disagree? And how should we approach using AI to repurpose content? I agree that it's not going to be a hundred percent accurate, but as I've seen from our community, from over 1,400 people in, in our Slack community coming up with prompts and figuring out, like, how do I get this to match my tone and the things that we've got? Like, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely able to come up with words, a structure, something that would sound like me because it is my words. And as I tell everyone, if I can get you 80% of the way there and create 50 pieces of content that are 80% and all you have to do is now edit it, then that saves me so much time. And that's what I love to do. It's like, great. How could I take this conversation where you and I are having, Joe, and go write me all the pieces of content. Now I just have to read it, review it, edit, maybe stitch things together, add a little more like Greg-esque to it, you know? But like for the most part, that's going to be good. Or you can also choose like what persona, right? Like, I talk or I write like I talk, but maybe I'm like, <laughs> I should be a little more professional. So I'll let the AI make me a little more professional so that uh, it's not so, let's go grab beers with Greg kind of conversation and I'll let it do that. So I get to kind of choose it, but it's fully editable. So that's where I'm, I'm fully bullish on like, yes, AI is allowing me to still keep my words, keep who I am and write so I don't have to. Gotcha. And I guess it's a little different from like just having ChatGPT invent a blog post out of 
out of thin air, right? You know, if you train something like cast magic, which I guess like maybe we should start there. Can you can you train cast magic or is this more like um, you're feeding it the content and it'll kind of learn off of that? So it's not so much training, but there's a couple ways you can do it. A, it's only using the recording you're giving. So if I go to like ChatGPT and ask, write me a blog post about podcasting or a good example, give me a, uh, write me a blog post about breaking the fourth wall, which is what I tell people as podcasters, like that's something you should be doing, right? I can go there, it's going to write me this whole thing. Or what I did is I took our app, recorded my thoughts for two minutes, and my ramblings, it then wrote me a blog post. Now it's literally using what I talked about as the basis and only using that as the content. And then you can use content sample. It's like, well, let me feed it stuff I've already written so it's got a better understanding of kind of what I write and this is what I want. So if you're like, I've got a newsletter, I've already got this written style, I paste that into there, I create the prompt, write me a newsletter in this style. It already has my format of a style because I've already written, and now it's just using my recording. So it's not so much training as much as is giving it the guidance. Gotcha. I think that's a really good approach, especially using your own source content. I think I'm, I'm still really... There are some things that AI says that it's like a dead giveaway. It'll be like, with a plethora of tools for using AI repurposing, we're going to go on a journey to take the closest look at whatever, whatever. And I guess that's where the editing you mentioned comes in, right? Where it's like, all right, well, this kind of sound, this sounds like AI. So I guess I don't, I don't have like a question at the end of this sentence. I'm just kind of thinking out loud about kind of the, the blend of adding your own, like making sure you get a good finished product, right? Out of what AI gives you. Look, I use Grammarly as a plugin. There you go. You can use an affiliate link and, and give Grammarly some love, <laughs> right? I use Grammarly as a, as a plugin for my writing, right? And if I write like I talk, it is nice to have Grammarly go like, Greg, this is not the most grammatically correct sentence. Let's, instead of like, I'm not sure, it's, it likes to change it to unsure. And so like, I'm like, okay, how do I make it more clear, concise? I am a storyteller. I will continue to ramble. It's great to go, like, let's make it clear, concise, and Grammarly is going to help me. Well, Grammarly is just ultimately an AI tool in itself. So I'm just figuring out how do I use technology so that I can talk, write, and move on. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I like what you're saying here, generally speaking. And I think it really depends on the comfort level, right? If if someone's comfortable writing, then great. If they're more comfortable talking, then great. I I feel like I ramble. I mean, I feel like the last few minutes of me talking on this show have been me trying to coalesce my thoughts into something good. Whereas sit me in front of a cursor and I will, like I use Ulysses, big fan of Ulysses. I'll bust out a blog post with, uh, I think like a better version of my thoughts. but. And that's why I just talk into the app and I'm like, all right, I will walk around my apartment or you go walk in the dog or you're walking with your kids, right? Like whatever the kid, you're driving, you're like, I've got thoughts. How do I sit there and type it? No, I can't do it. So like, let me just speak those thoughts and I'll let the AI help me organize that into whatever content back to or first piece repurposed I want to do. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I do, I use the, the iOS app, big fan of it. I'll do exactly what you said. If my kids are like playing in the yard and inspiration strikes, I'll kind of just like ramble into that app so that it's at least a place for me to get those initial thoughts and maybe organize them a little bit better versus like dictate. I used to dictate text in a shortcut that would just dump it in Ulysses. But then later I like will lose the thread and be like, what was I really trying to say here? Where I think cast magic or some other AI tool does do a better job of keeping the thread. Or at least remembering the thread. Or at least going back and re-listening to it, going like, what did I mean? Where's my thoughts going? Like, okay, at least it's there. But yeah, I mean, if we go back to the, the basis of like everyone listening right now, like how do we work smarter, not harder? How do we ensure that, as you said, if you are a speaker, great, let's leverage that. If you're a writer, then you're probably going to go like, no, I'm a copywriter. It's like, fine. Even if you're a copywriter, do you want to write 20 pieces of content? Probably not, because you don't have time to sit there and write 20 pieces of content. So if I can go ahead and use your copywriting skills to edit 20 pieces of content and just let the AI start for you, 
then that is A, better use of time, and B, you're going to get more content. You're like, I wish I could do X, but you don't have the time to do X because you're so much of a perfectionist. You're so focused on, it sounds too much like AI. Great. Edit the AI. That's easier to do. Yeah. It does. I mean, it's also good for other perspectives, right? Like, what am I missing here? for example. And I guess this brings us to kind of the last piece is some ways AI can help us save time in repurposing and promoting. Question I get all the time, but I want to start that with Cast Magic is a, it'll repurpose video and audio content, right? It'll take that, break it down. But the, I think one of the cooler things that I alluded to earlier was it's got these kind of different content types you can choose. So can you talk a little bit about that? And then we'll kind of get into the repurposing and promoting portion. Yeah. So, I mean, the way we like to think about cast magic is how do we take any conversation and turn it into content like magic? And we've built eight different profiles. You've got uh, coaching, podcasting, YouTube, sales, courses, meetings. And so we already know if you have a meeting, you're probably going to need certain content created for you, extracted from that meeting. Or in this case, as a podcast, you're like you already know you're going to need titles. You're going to need a speaker bio. You're going to need timestamps. So we already go ahead and go, great, let the AI build all those content blocks and pieces for you based on the different profiles. And that's where I'm able to go ahead and say, like, how do I take a coaching call, turn it into a course, and then load that recorded course into the course section and create me a worksheet and quiz. So I am able to work smarter, not harder. I'll keep saying it. Yeah. Yeah. That is, I think, my favorite feature, right? Because that coupled with, I think, another really good feature uh, that Cast Magic has, I think makes it the most versatile. And that is these kind of community prompts, right? So you have a set of prompts. What I really, I, I don't remember seeing this in, in competing products, you can reword or modify the prompt, right? And so like if you if I get something that I don't like that much, I can modify the prompt that's already there or I can download these community prompts, which I think is which I think is what makes Cast Magic maybe the most flexible of the tools out there. The way I like to look at it is back to the we know that you need these certain prompts or most likely you're going to want these prompts. Great. If you don't like the prompt or you don't like the output, as, as I tell everyone, I'm like, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over again and expecting a different result. So if you're like, I keep trying the same prompt over and over, I'm like, write me 10 titles, write me 10 titles, and it's not giving you what you want, then like, then come up with your own prompt and say, like, write me 10 titles in this format. Great. You have the ability to go into Cast Magic and extract now that style that you want. Or as you said, the community prompts. We've got a community that is literally building all these other prompts that they're testing. And then you're playing, you're like, I didn't even know to ask that. I didn't even know how to word that. So how do I leverage the community as a whole to help you guide you on what you're trying to accomplish? I think someone the other day was working on a book. They spent 12 days and wrote a 22,000 word book using Cast Magic, literally all through just their thoughts and coming up with prompts to make it sound like themselves, but extract it so that it would be written into a book format. I have strong opinions about that. I don't want to derail this conversation, but uh, I do want to ask about the, first of all, I love the prompts idea. I think that's really interesting. I have said that using AI to write your book is is kind of like saying I used a car to, to run a marathon. But that's a conversation for a different day because I do want to get... Well, but remember, it's their words... So she's literally speaking into her mic, going like, I'm rambling, rambling, rambling. I organize that into a chapter for me. No different than you taking these podcasts and going like, how do I write a book about podcasting based on the 500 episodes that you've done, right? So it's just organizing what you've already said, your thoughts into something cohesive. I think there's, I want to remain consistent in my view. So I don't want to like blindly, I don't want to agree straight out with this, but I I think there is a, there's more to writing a book than just organizing thoughts is my general feeling on it. But that said, all right, I do want to, we just like teased this. uh, (laughs) We teased this thing. This is the question I get most from podcasters, especially how can I improve my process for promoting and repurposing? So I think this is probably one of my favorite uses for a tool like cast magic. 
I mean, we touched on a lot, but let's put like a one to three actionable tips here for the way people can use Cast Magic or another AI repurposing tool to repurpose and promote the content they're creating. We don't have to just lock it down to podcasts. I mean, look, turn into So yeah, we've kind of talked about it. It's like, how do I turn into the social posts that I need, right? How do I turn into a blog, a newsletter? As I always tell people, like, stop trying to force a person to just listen and start thinking about how do I use AI to expand my brand, which goes back to, I think, what I loved about you said, the authoritative piece that we use as podcasts. So like, you are trying to build your authority. Your authority comes from the conversation of your podcast disseminated into all these other little tentacles, blogs, social posts, newsletters. So use AI to do what you are like, I don't have the time to write a tweet or th- a tweet thread. I don't have time to write a LinkedIn post. This will create that format for you. Five different ways to Sunday if you want. And that's a great way. The other ways I would look at it is think about your business. Like, What are other aspects? As I said, I take my coaching calls and I leverage pages to create a course for me. So is there something of value that I could use maybe from meetings to repurpose? Because I'm extracting that from sales calls, from your podcast to create something else that builds your brand. If you are trying to get speaking engagements, great. Like this is a great way to do it. So I'd say using AI to repurpose your content Go beyond just the downloads and go beyond just the business that you're working through and think about how do I expand and monetize other ways, in this case, a course. Yeah, I like that a lot, right? Because it is it is more than just saying like, watch this clip on my show and then, and then go listen to my show. And I'll say like one of the biggest time savers for me, thanks to Cast Magic and the custom prompts, is the top takeaways. Because at some point, right, I take, I take notes during the show. You've probably noticed, right, because we're on video. But I want to be more engaged. And something that Cast Magic has really helped me with, uh, like very impressively helped me with, is I don't have to take as many notes, right, during the show. I'll kind of just write, write a couple of words or the edit points, right, because those are like the things that I want to make sure I get. Maybe a cold open, but I've even stopped doing that now because Cast Magic gives me quotes, right? Like interesting quotes and interesting places. But in every episode description, there is the story I come up with to intro the show. And then there's the top takeaways. And I used to just pull the top takeaways from my notes, which were sometimes incomplete. Now I have a prompt that's like, come up with uh, four to seven top takeaways. And then I pick the three I think are the best. And because I feed it other top takeaways, right? There's like the give us sample content. They sound really good, right? Like these, this bulleted list. I'm like, I can more or less wholesale copy this and put it into the show notes. And that honestly, it's a big time saver because now I'm like, what do we talk about? What are the best parts of this? And that's been a really big time saver for me. I mean, I love that. But yeah, I I always tell people like, I don't use threads by Instagram. I don't use Twitter, but I keep those as sections in my content because it will give me a quick little sentence. And I'm like, ooh, I love that. I'm going to paste that up into my LinkedIn post that it wrote for me and go, this is a better sentence or better sentence structure. And I can just edit. And I'd rather have everything I could edit as opposed to me trying to think about a structure of all these different styles. Yeah, love that. Awesome. Well, we are at the end of our conversation. Greg, we've talked a lot about cast magic and repurposing in general. This has been really great. If people want to learn more about you, where can they find you? As of right now, I live on LinkedIn. So every Monday, I post three podcasts that I think people should listen to. If you're always looking for recommendations or if you have a show that you want me to listen to and, and maybe make it included in there, you know, reach out. But I'm always posting content about podcasting, partnerships, because that's what I live in a lot. But right now, yeah, LinkedIn's the best place to find me. Awesome. Well, I will include that and everything we talked about in the show notes over at streamlined.fm slash 415. That's streamlined.fm slash 415. Greg, thanks so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Hey, Joe, thank you once again for bringing me on. For everyone that listened, I really appreciate you guys spending the time and listening to what we had to talk about. Hopefully you found some value there. Thanks so much for listening. Thanks to our sponsors. Be sure to check everything out at streamlined.fm. And until next time, I'll see you out there.